You are listening to the Praise Works Health and Wellness Network. Our broadcast host will take you on a journey of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. All the content aired on this network have been copywritten and are protected by federal copyright laws. All duplications and our rebroadcast of any show on this network must have the expressed written permission of the network owners. The claims and views presented on this network are not necessarily the view and opinions of the network owners. Take a moment every day to look in the mirror and smile, for do you not know that your body houses the Holy Spirit who is in you, a gift from God? You are not your own and have been purchased by God, so honor him with your body as you take a journey of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to the Wellness Journey with Linus of PraiseWorks. Our program will show you the fun and simplicity of wellness. You can achieve total wellness through holistic practices and fitness. Join us now as we talk to experts in the field of total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Here's Linus. Hi, this is Linus of PraiseWorks, and welcome to the Wellness Journey. We are so glad that you've decided to take some time and listen to our show today, and I think we have a great show planned for you today, something that is really going to give you some good information that's going to help you along your journey to total wellness. You know, as I always like to say, that it's all about the journey, and along the way on your journey, you will find information and tools that we have hope will help you to make some decisions about how you can make lifestyle changes, permanent lifestyle changes that will help you with total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. And when we're talking about lifestyle changes and things like that, that brought to mind uh, some of the healthy choices that we need to be making for our whole family. For those of you out there who are raising families or those of you who have children who are raising families, here's a few tips that I'd like to leave with you and things that you want to think about in terms of a day of healthful choices for the entire family. And for those of you uh, who may not have families, this can be for you too, for individuals. These are things that you need to be thinking about. Now, this is something that I know is true and I could do a better job at it myself, and that is making sure that you fuel up first thing in the morning. A healthy breakfast can give you and your family a sharper mind, more energy, and a better total nutrition for the day. A balanced breakfast includes having things that are, you know, protein, carbs, fiber, um, you know, one, make sure you include those things in your diet. I always like the idea of having a, a banana in the morning, uh, maybe some oatmeal with raisins. Those are things that I like to eat. It all depends on what, you know, feels good to your body because everybody's body is different. But the main thing is that you want to fuel up with things that are healthy for you. Another idea in terms of... Um, starting your day in a healthy way is, you know, get moving. If you get up early enough, before heading out for your day, take a brisk 30-minute walk around your neighborhood so you will feel invigorated. Something about the fresh air and the sunshine, or even if there isn't sunshine, just the fresh air and the briskness of a morning walk can invigorate your day, can uplift you. For me, it's very helpful. It helps kind of help me think through my day, kind of helps me get rid of some of the worries that, you know, are those irrational thoughts that come in maybe when you first get started in the morning, think, well, I've got to do this, this, that. Well, when you go on that walk, it's invigorating, and it kind of gives you that can-do attitude that you can take on the day, seize the day. So get up early enough to have your breakfast and to take an invigorating walk in the morning. Another thing you want to make sure you do is that you make sure that you put moisturizer on your skin before you leave for the day. 
a sunscreen is a sunscreen is always important if you can do that. Um, it's even in the winter, even when it's cloudy, the UV rays can penetrate and sear into your skin, and the part, the particularly exposed areas like your faces and your ears and the backs of the hands. So get some a good sunscreen. If you're not sure what kind of sunscreen to get, um, uh, consult your dermatologist or your holistic practitioner. We want to protect our skin against the UV rays. Something else when it comes to being healthy as a family, travel light. Now, this is for uh, the moms and, and the dads with the heavy backpacks and the huge purses and also our kids with the backpacks that they use. Overloaded backpacks and purses can strain and injure your muscles and your neck and your shoulders and your back. Backpacks shouldn't contain more than about 10 to 15 percent of the wearer's weight. So look for one with a wide padded straps. Wear it on both shoulders to make sure you're distributing the weight evenly. And look for lightweight purses and briefcases and totes. And pack only what you really need. I know it's hard to do, ladies. I'm guilty of that. But I find that if I have a smaller purse instead of a larger one, I pack it lighter because I can't fit anything anyway. So I'm thinking, well, gee, what was all that stuff I had in my purse the other day that I just thought I couldn't live without? Now I've got a smaller purse and I seem just fine. So be kind to your bodies. Be kind to your temples. And make sure you pack your bags lightly so that you're not straining your neck muscles and your back muscles. Here's one last tip for a healthy family. Uh, get more from your commute. Now, I know there's a couple of people who commute, more than a couple of people that listen who commute every day to work. And a lot of times, if you can, if there is a way for you not to get in the car to commute, if there's a way to share a ride sometimes so you're not so stressed out in the day, or if you're actually within walking distance of your job, you know, this is a car and try walking the commute. Uh, you'll save on gas, you'll keep the environment cleaner, and you can start your day with a healthy glow. It's really important that if you can um, walk to work that you have really good walking shoes that you can use to support your walk. So those are a few tips that you can use to start your day. And for more tips about starting your day and having healthy choices for you and your family, go to my website www.praiseworks.biz and on that site we have a blog and go to the blog and you'll find all kinds of healthy tips and things for your family as well as for individuals um, all kinds of holistic practices and fitness ideas to get you well on your journey of total wellness for your mind, body and spirit also, I wanted to remind you that uh, we have uh, two new talk shows on our network that I'm very excited about Common Sense with um, Anita Johnson that comes on and take a look at the show page and I'll tell you when that comes on. And That's the show on, about financial wellness and the tips that we need to stay financially well. And some people might think that financial wellness isn't a part of being well, but it actually is. If your finances aren't well, if you're strapped financially, that causes stress. And of course, stress beats away at your immune system. And of course, if, if you're beating away at your immune system, next thing you know, you're dealing with other issues regarding your health. So, Tune in and take, take a listen to Common Sense with Anita Johnson. Also, we have Real Talk with Lady Daz. Have you ever had questions about scripture and how it relates to everyday life? I think that you will find her talk show a lot of fun to listen to, and it really puts an everyday realistic viewpoint of what the scripture says. And she comes on, on uh, I believe it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Check our show page to find out when she'll be coming on. And we hope that you enjoy these new shows. Give us your feedback. Let us know what you think of the wellness journey and the two new shows that we have on the air. Uh, send an email to www.thewellnessjourney.com. That's www.thewellnessjourney.com thewellnessjourney.com. And finally, don't forget to go to Facebook and like our pages, Praise Works Inc. on Facebook, and also Our Journey to Wellness Coaching on Facebook. Like both those pages. On both pages, you'll find information on health and wellness, holistic practices, and also spiritual and emotional support. We like the idea that our life is a continuum. And along that continuum, you have your health and your wellness, your spiritual life and your emotional life. They all have to be well. If anything is a little bit off, then you're not totally well. When we get back, we're going to talk about the kinds of things you need to be doing for your health when it comes to eating right. We're going to talk about gluten-free diets. Uh, so 
to come back to us real soon. You're talking to Lennis with Praise Works, and we're going to be right back with the wellness journey. Before a journey begins, just like any adventure, we must start with assessing what is needed. Our journey to wellness coaching is dedicated to assisting people along their path to total wellness for their mind, body, and spirit, which is achieved by making lifestyle changes through the use of holistic practices and fitness. Our journey to wellness coaching helps people to realize their day-to-day -day goals for exercise, nutrition education, weight management, motivation, and spiritual self-awareness while providing personalized support and feedback to achieve their goals of personal growth and development. Together, we will determine your goals and develop an achievable personal plan so that you are well on your way to successfully achieving total wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. So go to our website at www.praiseworks.biz and take our free assessment to determine how we can help you achieve a happier and healthier life. Remember, it's not about the destination, but it's all about the journey. Hi, this is Lennis from PraiseWorks, and welcome back to the Wellness Journey. And today we have someone with you, with us that I think is really going to brighten your day. We have Jennifer Fugo with us who has a fantastic story to tell. She is a yoga coach and also a health and wellness coach, and she is an expert, or as we say, a guru when it comes to the gluten-free diet. Uh, she has a fantastic um, website, www.evolvingwell.com. And we want to in uh, introduce uh, Jennifer. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Hi, Linus. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining the Wellness Journey. You have so much information to share. I don't know where to start first, but first, as is tradition at the Wellness Journey, tell us what your story is. How did you become uh, a health coach? How did you d decide to make this your vocation? Well, thank you first for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with everyone. Um, I started because I got sick. I mean, isn't it funny how oftentimes our journey in life is a result of something that happens to us that isn't, yeah. you know, something that you are proud of? But I, um, I had spent several years very sick, and it was the run-of-the-mill stuff that when you go to the doctors, they're like, well, they're kind of all small things. They don't really uh -huh. make – they're not big deals. But to me, and I, I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate, those – little things add up to a very poor quality of life. And mm -hmm. for me, it was constant headaches. I was always sick to my stomach all the mm. time. Um, I couldn't wake up from sleeping after 9, 10, sometimes 11 hours. I felt like I had been drugged. I was getting sick about every six to seven weeks, a really bad head cold, and I just generally felt horrible. Now, hmm. a little side note of what I didn't know was actually a symptom was that I had put on 20 pounds. And I couldn't figure out why that was happening because I had been kind of a gym rat and I had been going to the gym three to four days a week. And here I am, you know, and I'm doing a lot of aerobic exercise. I'm riding my bike and all this stuff and I'm putting on weight. And, you know, you think like I'm doing all this stuff. I shouldn't be gaining weight and I am. What's right. going on? So um ends up that I went through a bunch of doctors and people gave me these random thoughts that really didn't, they were like basically telling me they didn't know. Take some B vitamins. Sleep more. You know, and I, they didn't know. More than what you were and, already sleeping, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm like, but I don't feel good. And they're like, I don't know what to tell you. You know, they, they really didn't. And that was, that was the honest to God truth. And finally I found someone who listened to what I had to say and she said, you know, I think we have a problem with gluten. Now, for me, I'm Italian background. So my, my family, both sides, are from Italy. And I pasta. had eaten bread, pasta, <laughs> like every meal. 
you know, for years I was, I was, um, 20, about 27 when all of this was happening. And so 27 years of, you know, being in a certain way of lifestyle of eating and, um, no, your relationship to food. And all of a sudden someone's like, yeah, um, I think you're, yeah, that's making you sick. So wow. I had to take that out and my life just changed. It changed in ways that I couldn't have even imagined because I didn't realize that all these little symptoms added up to something really big. And they all pointed to a particular problem. But it didn't matter the quality of the food that I ate because I ate all um, organic food, but that it was actually something in the food that was bothering me. And that's the thing I think... I was going to say that's very interesting because um, the whole gluten, to gluten or not to gluten, that is the question, you know. Everybody mm-hmm. is um, having a debate about that. And what is your opinion? Do you think that everyone needs to have a gluten-free diet or do you think it, it should be only those who need to look at it if they have allergy problems or some other kind of health problems? I mean, it, I know that gluten is not good for you, but is it something that everybody should be doing or does it depend on the individual? Well, that's actually a really good question um, because I see a lot of articles out there on the Internet and there's a lot of blog posts and you Google gluten and plenty of info will come up and a lot of it's conflicting. What I have found, and in my personal opinion, I don't think every single person needs to be gluten-free. So if there are people out there who are thinking I need to jump on board because all these doctors and experts are saying go gluten-free, You know, for some people, gluten might be perfectly tolerable, but for many people, it's a problem. And for a a smaller group of people, it becomes almost a life and death issue when you get into like celiac disease and certain other health problems. So what I always tell people is to try decreasing the amount that you eat because a lot of people have no idea actually how um, how much gluten is in their diet and an overabundance of any one thing in your diet can actually cause massive problems well let's talk about that for a little bit what exactly is gluten and what foods have gluten in it that's that's a good one Um, gluten is this spongy protein And if you think of a slice of bread, like a really nice Italian baguette, and you were to kind of like um, squeeze it on the crust sides, you know, it has this sponginess to it. That's what gluten is. It's like nature's glue. It makes bread spongy. It makes things stick together. Oftentimes it's used as a binder in many ingredients. So where it's found, and this was a genius little acronym that my nutritionist shared with me. She said, okay, well, the basic way to know where you're going to find gluten is to think of brows, B-R-O-W-S. T stands for barley. R is for rye. O is for oats but I have to put a little asterisk there and say that are contaminated because oats don't naturally contain gluten. And then W obviously is wheat and S is for spelt. And you'll see some uh, pasta and crackers that are made of spelt. It's a less popular grain, um, Mm -hmm. but uh, it's a form, it's an older form of wheat. So those are a good general, um, that's a good general thing to kind of go off of, to use the BROWS acronym when you're looking at a label, anything that's derived from those. So if you see barley malt, it's malted mm-hmm. barley, and it's used as a sweetener sometimes in cereals, you know that there's gluten in there. Okay. And you, and you said wheat, oats, and what was the other one you said? It was, it was, it was an R. Barley, rye, oats that are contaminated, wow. wheat, and spelt. Okay. Now, let's talk about oats that are contaminated because I'm one of those people that believe in um, eating oatmeal in the morning. Now, what is considered to be contaminated oatmeal or contaminated and oats? That's, that's, um, that's actually a really interesting question because I, at first I didn't entirely understand why oats were contaminated, but anything that's not marked gluten-free, it has to be certified gluten-free, is contaminated. Mm-hmm. The reason is that generally the fields of wheat and oats are grown side by side. 
when they are harvested, they're harvested on the same equipment. So obviously the proteins from wheat and oats are contaminating one another. They are then processed on similar equipment. They are then mm -hmm. contaminated that way. So that's why regular oats, if anyone has an autoimmune condition, if you are gluten mm -hmm. sensitive or intolerant or have celiac disease, you, your bag of oats, and it doesn't matter whether it's um, uh, a steel cut or instant oats, it has to say gluten free. Because and that's really important. Oats, that's important to yeah. point out too, and, um, not to interrupt, but I really wanted to point that out in terms of, of um, allergies and um, new autoimmune system issues and the uh, celiac disease. Um, being gluten free uh, will really suppress the symptoms um, of, of those particular conditions. And it's amazing how many people do not know this and um, how many people are suffering, and it, they could just make a, a change in their diet in terms of gluten, that they won't have the same symptoms. Now, when it comes to making that change, uh, that lifestyle change, because it is a lifestyle change of uh, eating gluten products to gluten-free products, what's the first step? What's the first thing a person should consider doing? How do they begin to incorporate that um, without probably stressing themselves out even for like, oh, God, I can't eat anything. Everything in this cabinet is gluten. So what's the first step towards having a gluten-free diet? Well, as a health coach, I've worked with many clients in transitioning them away because, like me, it's a shock. It really is when your whole entire life revolves around things where wheat especially is very prominent in your life. And the first step is to understand that a gluten-free diet can't be your focus. You have to focus on eating well in a way that happens to be gluten-free. Because gluten is just in those, in that BROWSE acronym, that's where gluten lies primarily. There are a few other grains, but they're ancient grains that rarely are sold in supermarkets. So you don't really need to worry about them so much. But the thing is, you can eat pretty much everything else, meat, uh, fish, beans, vegetables, fruit, dairy. I mean, your whole, almost the whole supermarket is available to you so long as they don't add gluten to it. So it's important to understand what is gluten-free because the big problem that I see is that people who find out or want to try out the gluten-free lifestyle is that they'll just start buying gluten-free products. So mm -hmm. instead of eating you know, regular bread, they'll go, oh, I'm going to buy gluten-free bread. I'm going to buy gluten-free tortillas, and I'm going to buy gluten-free this and that and the other. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is, is that those grains and products are so heavily refined that they lack a lot yeah. of fiber and sometimes nutrients. You can't rely solely on gluten-free products. You have to eat real food. And when people, when you give them permission to say, okay, I can actually go to the supermarket and buy plenty of food and eat well, and I'm not getting any gluten in my diet, that's great. You know? But I mean, there's great, if you still want to eat grains, you can eat brown rice or white rice. I always tell people to shift to brown rice because there's more fiber mm -hmm. and nutrients. But right. you can eat corn, um, you can eat amaranth, quinoa, millet. I mean, there's so many other things out there that you can indulge in um, that, you know, will, will be perfectly fine and suitable for someone leading a gluten-free lifestyle. Well, that's interesting because I'm glad you pointed that out because just like, for instance, the 2% milk, People are thinking, okay, I want to get as much fat out of my diet as possible. So I'm not going to purchase, um, I'm going to purchase all low fat. And while that does seem to make sense intellectually, the reality is that in order for them to get the fat out of products, they have to go through a process. It's processed. And the more our food is processed, the, le the less natural and, of course, organic it is. So when, this is a good example. You're saying that gluten-free products, they're processed. 
something go through a refining process in order to pull that stuff out. And while they're pulling that stuff out, they're also pulling other things out that make that uh, food normally uh, of nutritive value. And the interesting thing about what you said was it's not so much about, as you said, trying to eat gluten-free as it is trying to just eat healthy. And as you go about eating healthy, you begin to uh, realize other things that you were eating that you just kind of naturally want to cut out of your diet. Let me ask you a question about pasta because okay. that's a favorite of mine and a favorite of a lot of people. Is there anything now that you eat since you can't eat the pasta anymore that's similar to that, that you enjoy as much as pasta? Have you been able to find a way to replace the oh, pasta absolutely. from your I mean, heritage? <laughs> absolutely. I, the thing you have to understand is that the gluten-free food market is booming. Um, a mm-hmm. lot of companies are looking to replace our normal, everyday breads, pastas, crackers, you name it, (laughs) any baked Mm -hmm. pastries, they're finding a way to provide you a gluten-free alternative, which on one hand is a good thing. You know, every once in a while, my husband and I will make a pot of pasta Mm -hmm. um, because I I, I do love it, but I also am aware that, you know, you have to be mindful of portion control, and a lot of times we make pasta and make it the center place of a meal when really it should be a side dish. Um, right. And gluten-free pasta is okay. There's many different varieties. They use uh, some pastas are brown rice or white rice. You can find quinoa, corn, um, and then some other mixtures of things in the supermarket mm-hmm. or order it. Uh, Amazon.com is a great source for gluten-free products, especially for people who don't live near a major city with, say, like a Whole Foods or a really good natural food store that will sell gluten-free products. But mm-hmm. ultimately. You know, when I make something, we make a lot of vegetables. And the vegetables mm-hmm. and maybe a small piece of meat that's like a quarter of the plate mm-hmm. will be the centerpiece and the pasta will be small. Um, mm-hmm. But, I, again, it's really important to understand that that gluten-free products, anything you want out there, you can find. But they are not necessarily a healthful – that's the one thing I really want to get across to people. They are not necessarily healthy. Um, Mm -hmm. those products to begin with, just because a muffin or a cookie or a a donut happens to be gluten-free doesn't make it healthy. Gluten-free and healthy are not necessarily the same thing. And Mm -hmm. it's important for people to understand because there are people who go on a gluten-free diet, eat lots of products, and start putting on a lot of weight. And these are some of the reasons why. They're also very high glycemic which can be a problem yes, as well. Yes, that's true. That can definitely be a problem. And there was something else I was going to ask you. Uh, for you personally, when you started eating um, a gluten-free diet, what was your aha moment in terms of realizing, wow, this is starting to make a difference? When did you begin to realize that it was really beginning to make a difference in, your, in how you felt? It was actually about a few days in. I, my stomach had never been so quiet <laughs> in years, mm. and I didn't feel sick. I had a few bouts of, of being very sick, and I, I wasn't sure why because the gluten was gone, and I later found out that it was actually eggs. So eggs are another actually worse sensitivity than gluten for me, but mm. eggs were easier for me to remove because they're not in everything. But Um, I felt so much better, and I called my nutritionist, and I was like, something different. Something has changed. And we, you know, we actually did confirm it with blood work, so I know for sure um, the the issues. But about a month or two later, I tried on a pair of pants that I had forgot, I had bought right before I um, saw the nutritionist, and I sort of forgot about them. And Mm -hmm. they were still in the bag, and I took them out, and I put them on, and they didn't fit. I had lost so much weight that they were enormous, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't – what's going on here? I had no idea that the weight I had put on was Mm -hmm. a symptom of the gluten. And it's really – actually, this is a very important thing because a lot of women ask me about this, about why I lost – because I did end up losing that 20 pounds of weight, but it Mm -hmm. wasn't fat. When you eat something – 
that causes an immune response in your body. Like for me, it's gluten and eggs and dairy and some other things. But if you eat anything that causes an inflammation, uh, an, uh, an immune response, it therefore causes what's called silent inflammation in your body, which is basically like if you think of your immune system as alarm system and burglars keep going in and setting off the alarm system and you can't stop it because you don't know which way they're getting in your house, your alarm system is constantly going off. So same thing, your immune system is constantly being set off and eventually it begins to wear your body down and that elevation creates inflammation, which is weight gain. So for me, 20 pounds of weight is a lot because I'm a very small framed individual. And, you know, I had had this problem for years and was unaware of it and didn't know that the weight that I was putting on, ex- no amount of exercise is taking inflammation weight off. So if you yes. or any of your listeners has, you know, if you've struggled with losing weight and you've exercised and you've done all this stuff and you can't do it, you need to start going, okay, is this weight really fat or is this inflammation? Because inflammation yeah. is, is not going to be handled through working out, unfortunately. You know, and I wanted to, to say something about that, too, because there are a lot of people who, such as yourself, are working out and not losing weight, in some cases even gaining weight. And I really think it's a good idea before you even start any kind of exercise program or any kind of program about losing weight, that you consult a doctor or a holistic doctor or a nutritionist to kind of see what your levels are to Absolutely. give you some aha moments so that you're not, you know, getting frustrated wondering you're doing all this working out and you're still not losing weight, whereas had you gone to your doctor or a holistic practitioner to take a look at your hormonal levels, your what's going on with your blood and everything else, there's a lot of stories there to be told in terms of what you might need to do because everyone is different. Everyone requires uh, different kinds of nutrients for their body, different kinds of exercise for their body, and there's a lot of information that you can get to help you plan in terms of what it is you need to do so that you don't get frustrated when you're spending, like in your case, four days a week in the gym and uh, not losing weight. Uh, For me personally, um, when I decided that I was um, going to change careers from being an HR executive to uh, becoming a health and wellness coach, one of the things that I wanted to do was to get in shape. Now, I'm a dancer, and I've been a dancer for years and um, have always danced. So I really wasn't overweight. I just wanted to just, you know, maybe tighten up a few things. The incredible thing was that I learned, um, I thought that I was in pretty good shape, but I had made a few subtle changes um, in my lifestyle, and that was the kind of workout that I was doing based upon what my goals were. And next thing I knew, after about two months or so, I had dropped um, a good 10 pounds that I didn't know I had. I mean, I knew I had it by the scale, but you couldn't really tell. Uh, But I just made some subtle changes after I had gone to the doctor and consulted my trainer of what I needed to do. And so the weight just kind of peeled off, and it was not a major sacrifice. I was not working out, you know, two hours a day every day and uh, not in, in, on a breakfastarian diet where I was just basically drinking water and air. I hadn't really made some, those major changes. They were subtle changes based upon the advice of uh, good counsel. So I think it's really important that people do that. And when it comes to the things that you're counseling uh, with people in terms of um, weight gain or nutrition and eating you know, better for a healthier life, what are some of the obstacles that you uh, have run into or that you're clients have run into in terms of motivation. What kinds of things do you help um, people stay motivated in terms of pursuing that lifestyle change that's going to help them feel better? Well, I think goal setting is really important. You have to know where you want to go. You know, just saying I want to lose weight, I I don't even really, at this point, just being a coach, there's a point when I have to say, well, I don't really know what that means because losing weight could be losing one pound. It could be losing 30 pounds. You have to be very clear on what you want um, as far as your goals because your goals help you create a plan in order to move forward. And I think a lot of times people are not clear enough with 
how they want to make change in their life. And so they don't see changes happening and they get very, they get very, um, they get, they feel very uh, frustrated because they don't see it happening fast enough. That's the other thing too, is that you have to understand that you didn't put the weight on in a week. You didn't put it on in a day. It took time to get to where you are and it ideally or not ideally, but it, in, in reality, it takes time to undo the or, or fill back up the hole that you've dug for yourself. So I always make sure that when I work with clients that I explain that we have to have some level of uh, reality in this entire thing because you can't expect that in one month you're going to lose all this weight. Right, right. And I always worry about those who Wait, do I lose weight. I always worry about those who do lose weight very quickly like that, what it is they're doing. Because nine times out of ten, Jennifer, don't you agree, it's not going to stick. It's going to come back. You have to do it in a healthy way. In a healthy way. And that's why, you know, I even for me, and this is something that whether you're a health coach or you're a life coach or any sort of therapist, you always have somebody that you work with. So I have my own nutritionist who I go to because she sees the picture from a different perspective than I do. I'm, she's not emotionally involved in, you know, what happens when I don't feel well. I am. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't feel good. And she's like, relax. <laughs> Let's look at the picture, the pieces. And that's what I do for others because I'm not, I'm not in the thick of things, you know, as a coach for someone else, just as my nutritionist isn't standing in my body and my shoes and getting involved in – all the thoughts and such that women tend to get caught up in because we're women. Like we have these thoughts, we have insecurities, it's life, and we, we work through them. But it's always good to have someone else there who can help hold your hand and help you see clearly where you really need to be focusing your attention on um, because sometimes other things can become a distraction and you get sort of uh, off, off the mark from where you need to be going. And that's why, you know, as, as you talked about hormonal health, uh, hormones are so critically important because your hormones regulate your oh metabolism. My goodness, yes. We are yes. hormones. We don't realize they regulate so many things. Um, Let me and, tell you, I, I am a walking hormonal um, testimony because I am in full-fledged menopause. I'm 54. And uh, I've just begun to realize over the last month or so, uh, okay, Time to go to the doctor to find out exactly what's going on with my hormone levels and then try, then time to decide how I want to deal with it holistically because I refuse to get on HRT. I will not do it. But it's so funny. Um, and here I am, a health and wellness coach, and I was thinking, why do I feel so funny? Is it? And finally I was like, okay, I am 54. Uh, haven't had a period in a year. <gasps> oh, my God, it's menopause. <laughs> Yeah. It's, Once it's the reality fun. set in, then all these other symptoms started popping up, and it was like, you know, my level of awareness was up. Yeah. And uh, talk to us about um, the um, thyroid problems and hormonal problems and gluten and how those all interact, because I, I find that fascinating, uh, of how, how people can maybe help themselves by, you know, taking a look at how gluten is impacting them if they're in menopause or having thyroid problems. And this is the one thing that, for me, thank goodness I never had a thyroid problem. However, I ended up with an adrenal problem. So oh. I've already gotten into the whole hormonal thing on my own personal, uh, in my own personal situation. But basically, gluten is inflammatory. So what happens is when you eat things that are inflammatory or that help um, suppress certain organ systems, uh, you, you don't realize you can cause massive problems. So if you, if any of your listeners, if you Google, say, uh, gluten and thyroid issues, a lot of information will pop up on the Internet because there is now um, coming about a direct connection between Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism and gluten intolerance. And gluten is actually exacerbating the symptoms of thyroid conditions. So what my mm-hmm. nutritionist, you know, my nutritionist 
um, Samantha Grant, and she's fabulous, and we're, and I'll love to share with everybody the free class that she's teaching through um, my website. But you know, she really helped me to understand that our hormonal system is not just a thyroid, not just your pancreas or just the ovaries or the adrenals. Everything is connected. It's a spider web. Everything is connected, and when one starts to have problems. The other system, they all rely on one another, all these different parts of the endocrine system. That's what our hormonal system is officially called. And when there's a problem in one area, they'll try and to start stealing from other areas. So if you start having a thyroid problem, it's oftentimes that the thyroid will start to steal from some other part of the endocrine system because it still needs to function as best as it can. And you get this problem where the, organ, the other organs are trying to compensate for a problem someplace else, and you get this cascade of massive health problems the longer it's let go. So for me, the longer my immune system was elevated, and I mean, I'm a type A individual. I am go, go, go. I like to work out. I like to do from all the life stress and just the stress of how I had been eating for years and I had been so sick, mm -hmm. I burned my adrenals out. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why I was having all these other problems. And she, when we did hormonal testing, she's like, you know, your adrenals are really shot. And they're starting to steal from your ovaries. She's like, we need to get Whoa. this corrected. Yeah. Mm. So people don't realize that it's important to understand the balance and to make sure that the balance is maintained. So gluten has massive consequences for the hormonal system. If you are, if you are sensitive or if you already have, you know for sure that you already have a hormonal problem, you may want to check out and see if removing some or all gluten from your diet might be beneficial. Yeah, I know for me personally, uh, that's part of the way that I've decided to go as well is using some essential oils uh, to help bring my body back into balance because um, I um, have um, an anxiety disorder that kicks in big time if my uh, hormones are off. So since I am going to the menopause stage, of course, my hormones are in play. So it's some interesting things that are happening right now. When I saw that you were having a class on uh, gluten, and one of the topics that you're going to be talking about is how it relates to thyroids. I, I definitely mm -hmm. wanted to mention that to everyone. On uh, Jennifer's website, which is a great website, Jennifer, it's, it's just chock full of information that I think is Thank so important you. for everyone. Yeah, and um, actually, there is the head over, if they actually go, I know you had mentioned the other website, mm -hmm. Evolving Well, earlier. This, this yes, particular uh -huh. website where the event is listed is glutenfreeschool.com. Oh, okay, this, I saw that. Okay. Yeah, and this website is specifically geared toward people who really need help going gluten-free or they need that basic advice. And there's a lot of free events on there. And so um, I'm, in, I'm actually interviewing my, my personal nutritionist, and she's based in L.A., and mm -hmm. she works with a lot of celebrities. Her mm -hmm. specialty is in hormone and metabolic correction, but she also does a lot with food sensitivities because, as we've said, we've clearly stated here, they're connected. So um, we're going to talk a lot about how gluten affects the hormonal system and a lot of other questions about inflammation and how, what's the best way to figure out how you're sensitive to gluten and all the big health problems that can come into play if you just start eating gluten-free products and you don't mm -hmm. actually switch to a more um, whole food diet. And as well as we're actually going to talk, which is a little bit of a controversial topic, about gluten mm -hmm. and corn because corn doesn't have yes. gluten in it. Yeah, I was just going yeah. to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people have problems with corn, and um, Samantha has some really interesting information about the similarities between the different proteins that are actually in corn and that um, the gluten protein. There's a lot of similarities, and so some people can actually be reactive to corn as well. And she talks about all these different issues and, and how and how you can figure that out and why you might want to avoid it. 
but she's just been a wealth of information for me and I oftentimes will go to her when I have a question or I've sent many clients to her. She's just, she's actually fabulous. So it's a free class on Tuesday, November 22nd at seven o'clock Eastern time. And it's a free event and anyone can come on over and register for the event. And, um, you know, it's, if you can't make it, I send you the recording. So it's just a very fun. um, Fantastic. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So everyone that's uh, www.gluten freeschool.com and uh, it's uh, is on uh, November 22nd. Go on to that website and register now and make sure you get a chance to be a part of this class because they're going to be talking about gluten and how it um, interacts with hormones and thyroid problems and the adrenals and a lot of things that we need to know and get clarified about gluten and I would imagine that there will be some myths about gluten that will be busted wide open so that we can have a really good understanding of what being gluten free is all about and this is with uh, Jennifer's uh, nutritionist who's going to be interviewed by Jennifer and I encourage all of you to participate in this class and also as I said before going to Jennifer's website uh, she has some wonderful information there that I think would be beneficial for everyone and that's www.evolvingwell.com and Jennifer I cannot uh, conclude the uh, conversation without talking about your other love, with, which is yoga. And um, I'm a dancer and certified dance instructor. I've been classically trained in ballet and, and have been dancing since I was four years old. And glad to say at the age of 54, I am still dancing. But I also do yoga and beginning to work through my certification process. Share with um, the audience one of the best things you like about yoga and and how it's been so beneficial for you? Well, I think for me, and actually I wrote a, it's interesting you bring this up, I wrote a blog about it recently on my Evolving Well um, blog. Um, Yoga actually helped me get through a very tough time. I had lived in New York City when 9-11 happened and suffered quite a a bit of post-traumatic stress, Um, a lot of anxiety. I had nightmares. And I had become extremely depressed after um, I moved home um, afterwards. And after I'd finished college, I moved home. And um, the subsequent two years following were some of the darkest points of of my life. I just, I had a very negative outlook of the world. And Mm. I I really didn't see, you know, that's what happens when you become really depressed. You don't see any hope anywhere and everything that you see that's negative sort of reinforces that mentality. And Mm -hmm. yoga helped me come out of that cloud that just seemed to hover in my life and I could not release and has provided me with the ability to have, to come back and have so much faith not only in the process of life and in something higher and greater than myself, but also in myself, that I really can live a beautiful, joyful, um, purpose-filled life. Um, I find peace and calm in a way that I don't necessarily get from other other things. And Mm -hmm. it's just, it's been a, that to me is such a huge game changer because when you're so when you're unhappy, your your the color is gone. It's sucked out of your your uh, your antenna. You know, it's like you're only watching color and black and your TV in black and white. And and yoga mm-hmm. really gave me that HD color back to be able to enjoy wow. life. To to I mean, I met my husband after I started practicing wow. yoga. Uh, you know, my mm-hmm. whole life just changed and I I teach yoga I love teaching yoga I also teach prenatal yoga as well which I enjoy being present and supporting a calm and peaceful space for moms many of them are new Mm -hmm. and you know I think yoga is a great thing for people to try it's I always say you know people go oh you have to meditate yoga every pose is a mini meditation you know it really helps you still your mind and um, for me, that has been worth it more than more than a lot of things. Between that and and shifting my diet, I am such a different person today as a result of these two lifestyle choices that I've made. 
And I think that's I, beautiful. I, yeah, and that's why I always invite people. I'm like, you know, we're on a journey. There's no, there's really no destination. It's about the journey, and you have to make sure that every day of your life is you're on the journey. Because if you're sitting behind the TV and you're, you know, whipping out your uh, microwave meals and you're just going on uh, cruise control <laughs> through every moment of your life, that's not why we're here. We're here to to lead beautiful, joy-filled lives. And you got to start doing something that's going to connect you to your your passion. I mean, we're women. That we're we are passion-filled beings that bring so much light into the world. So I always invite women, especially you, you've got to connect to that that space again. However, you can get back there, whether it be through yoga, through food, through golf, being with your girlfriends, taking long walks, whatever it may be, you have to get back there. I think that's so important. I am all for movement, whatever it is. Because for me personally, I mentioned like taking breaks and walks in the morning and things like that. But in in particular, I do yoga, I do Pilates, I dance, and I also now am into doing um, some weight training because I'm entering a a body sculpting contest for women in their 50s. That's going to be interesting. Uh, But all of this movement really helps me when it comes to my feelings of anxiety that I have from time to time, which are hormonally driven. And so I have found that movement, exercise of any kind, helps me uh, control some of those feelings in a natural way. Um, I also have found that it boosts my immune system, it gives me more energy, and it also helps me to release some of the toxins Uh, that just kind of sit in our joints uh, that we don't release any other way in some cases, but through movement, through the sweat that comes out of our sweat glands. And there's something important that I wanted to mention about yoga that I saw that you had mentioned, and I agree. Some people think that unless you are sweating, dripping (laughs) in any workout, you're not getting the full benefit of the workout. And the lovely thing about yoga is that it is a form of low impact that still releases toxins and still gets a different kind of process going on within your body that may not uh, show itself in, you know, gleamy, sweaty, smelling stuff that happens in maybe an aerobic workout. But you still get your cardiovascular. You still get your flexibility. You get your focus. You get your movement. You get a good use of uh, of your immune system. It really does do a lot of the things that are required uh, for any good exercise program. And I think that's one of the best kept secrets about yoga. So many people have the... um, uh, myths about yoga, like you said, the meditation, and uh, you have to um, uh, change your religion to do yoga, and just all kinds of things. Yeah. That just yeah, not it's true. not like that. It's not like that yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. And so, I think the no. one important thing to share with people as well is that even though you try one yoga class, there are so many different forms of yoga. Just because you try one one form, whether it be hatha or vinyasa or kundalini or whatever. Um, just because you may not like one doesn't mean you'll like others. So if you do want to practice yoga, try out different mm-hmm. teachers. Try out different schools of yoga. Mm-hmm. There's all I personally practice Prana Flow, which is based in L.A. with my teacher Shiva Ray. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, there's all different forms, and you don't have to go to Bikram or a hot yoga class to feel the effects of yoga. You can go to yeah, one. Yeah, I've been there, done that one. Feet. So I just I like to tell people that because they go to one class and they go, oh, I didn't like it. And that you really you have to really go around and find the right teacher for you and the right style. It is it's a journey, you know, just like everything. Yes, it is. I, I look at finding any kind of an exercise exercise program or even trying to find the right kind of diet and I don't mean dieting for losing weight because I don't believe in diets, but uh, even in finding the right kind of weight management and the kinds of things you want to be eating, it is an individual personal choice that is going to work specifically for you because we're all different. And uh, the thing that I love most about uh, making the lifestyle choice to live healthy is that you do have choices within that choice. Yeah. It doesn't have to just be one way. Finding what works for you is like going out shopping and buying a dress. Uh, We might 
grab that dress off the rack and buy it right away. But a lot of times in our shopping process, we may try on several dresses, several pairs of shoes or whatever it is before we decide, okay, this is the dress that I want. Or you might go ahead and buy those several dresses and several shoes, get them home, wear them a couple of times and say, you know, I really don't like that dress as much. I really don't like those shoes as much. I probably won't try that style dress or those style shoes any longer. I'm going to kind of go for this other style because I feel like it's more me. And that's really what finding a good exercise program is like and finding a good nutrition program is like. You have to listen to what your body is telling you because your body will tell you. It's like when you had your aha moment when you made a change that, wow, this feels good. This is me. Please stick with this because this is this is feeling good here. And, and that is really how you uh, begin that, that self and and I, I wanted to ask you also, you, you said you do what kind of form of yoga do you do? It's called prana flow. It's a more flowing okay. yoga that's mixed with mm-hmm. dance. There's definitely some elements. I was going to say, that's exactly the type that I had decided that I was going to study because I have such an in-depth background in dance. And it also uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Pilates because I am certified in Pilates. It was such a natural for me to do that because of all my dance, because of all the stretch and strength and all that. Yeah, absolutely. But I wanted something that was um, centered with the calming of spirit because yoga is a very calming, graceful kind of thing. If I wanted something that could incorporate the dance thing so that I wouldn't uh, feel silly. <laughs> I said, gosh, the yoga you're doing looks is looking like dance lenses. <laughs> and that's the thing so, is that you, if you want to look for something that's more flowy, I, I that was one thing I appreciated about my teacher because I don't uh-huh. have a dance background, and I personally mm-hmm. would say I don't dance well at all. Mm-hmm. But I knew that I wanted something graceful. I needed to practice something with an element of grace to it to get me to slow down and really be in these beautiful fluid movements. And that was what I really appreciated about my teacher. Um, and I've, I've, my friend, um, we were in Belize, and I was just in a gazebo on the property that we were staying on practicing, and she was watching me from afar, and she goes, it looked like you were dancing in air. She like, it was the greatest thing to watch. So oh, you know, wow. there's, That's there's some really beautiful things to, you know, all the different um the different schools and you just have to find what really resonates with you and find a teacher that really Mm -hmm. resonates with you and of course they always say when you're ready the teacher will appear so well that's and then that's what I'm kind of searching for now just like I found my right Piatti's teacher I found my right sort of by personal trainer and now I'm looking for the is it it it, pronounce it for me so I don't destroy it Venetia oh Vinyasa Vinyasa, Vinyasa, yes. Vinyasa. V-I-N-A, V-I-N-Y-A-S-A. Correct. Vinyasa, and vinyasa flow yoga. Exactly. And vinyasa literally means um, a series of poses linked together with breath. But my mm. teacher actually teaches that you could hold one pose and find a vinyasa within that particular pose. And that was, I loved that she was able to show you a microcosm and a macrocosm of one snapshot in time. And no one had ever shared that with me before. And that's that's something that I find fascinating as well as the sequencing. And, you know, for me, I I do spend time planning my classes and... um, this is a you do plan your classes and you, music is highly important and I yes, dress yes. you know I make sure that I look a certain way because it's it's a part mm-hmm. of this tradition so I I yes, really absolutely. appreciate it yeah I, I think it's beautiful and I'm also a praise dancer and what I I'm, I'm working on a DVD right now and it is going to be a combination of Piata's praise dance ballet, and I want to include the flow of yoga, Vinasa, in there somewhere uh, once I hook up with the right instructor. And I, I, I just believe in movement. And within the movement, I'm hoping that something resonates, you know, uh, with the people who are looking at the DVD. This will be my second DVD. And whatever movement resonates that they are feeling in their comfort zone. Uh, It's so important that whatever exercise 
program you choose that it is one that you enjoy. Because if you don't enjoy it, I don't care how great it is, it's not going to work for you. You're going to start finding excuses as to why not to go to class and everything else because you're not enjoying it. So choose something that resonates with your spirit. And Jennifer, it's so right about that. You shop for your yoga teacher or your ballet teacher or whatever movement that you're interested in. You shop around, try it out, and see what works for you. And once you find that that works for you, for you, then that's when you really start growing and, and really start developing that flow and really getting centered and kind of getting in touch with yourself. Don't you agree? Absolutely. And actually, one thing I would like to add to that is if someone doesn't have a particular teacher or a mm-hmm. place where you practice something right now, whether it be Pilates or ballet or whatever, you know what? Mm-hmm. Get your favorite music, turn it on for 10 minutes every morning, and just dance. Like, there you go. Music, dance, have a wonderful time. It elevates your energy levels. It elevates yes, your it sense does. of peace and calm and happiness. And yes, dance to whatever music makes you feel alive and filled with passion and life. That's, that would be my biggest tip for anybody who, you know, you hate going to the gym, you haven't found the right thing, just do that. Ten minutes a day in the morning, if you can do it in conjunction with other things, that's fabulous too. Yes, but yes. don't make excuses to do nothing, you know. Do right. what you can that's right. going to bring a little bit of that wonderful you out first thing in the morning. Oh, I just love that. And, you know, it sounds silly, but my kids and I have four daughters. They're all grown now. They're all in their 20s. But uh, we still do that whenever we get together. We we have a, a little thing that we do, and uh, it goes back from the 80s. And we put on a uh, Kurt Franklin uh, stomp. <laughs> <laughs> and we just start moving. And back in the day when they were little, I'm sure if somebody were to walk into our house and be like, what are they doing? But we were just releasing all that negative energy and kind of just feeling into the words. We, we would call it something on the devil's head is what we would call it. <laughs> but it was such a fun time, but it really put us in touch with our bodies and in touch to, for a need to recognize a higher power and how important movement is and to release stress and it was the very beginning inch to my journey of eventually being a uh, health and wellness coach that was my first little sign even though I had been a professional dancer for years the idea of making a career of helping older women find their their chi you know find that energy level that makes them feel good about themselves hadn't hit me yet but it started with that because at that time I have four kids and I think the youngest one was a toddler and we must have been a sight but we had so much fun and do you know Whenever we get together, because now my children live in all different parts of the country, when we get together for the holidays, whatever, we still do that. I don't care who's around. Everyone looks at us kind of crazy. But at the end of that session, we feel great. So I agree with Jennifer. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if anyone thinks you're crazy. That's your culture. You know, that's what binds that's right. you. Are those those that's unique right. personal moments? And you gotta you gotta celebrate those because there's so few Absolutely. moments in life we celebrate anymore. Celebrate that's those right. things in whatever way that's Absolutely. meaningful for you. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us on the wellness journey. I would love to have you back on because you have so much energy. Next time we'll talk more about yoga and movement and uh, how important it is in the whole evolution of uh, being totally well in your mind, body, and spirit. Would you come back and talk with us again? Absolutely. I would love to, Linus. I really appreciated talking to you. You you are absolutely a fabulous woman, and I'm so glad that our paths have crossed. Oh, thank you. Well, we're going to stay in touch because I'm going to let you know when I find the teacher and then I'm going to share with you what I've learned and then I'm going to probably send you some of my samples for the DVD and say, okay, Jennifer, does this look crazy? (laughs) I need a second eyes and ears. Absolutely. And I want to encourage everyone to go to uh, Jennifer's website, www.evolvingwell.com, and that will lead you into Jennifer's world of, um, of being a health coach, uh, clean cooking, yoga, 
food sensitivity guide. You can go to her website and download for free three easy steps for daily detoxing. This is a fabulous site, and, and, and Jennifer, it's going on my favorite links. I have on my site favorite links, and it will be on there in a couple of days so people can find you and find out more about you, and I'm just thrilled with all the wonderful things that you're doing. And Oh, quick question. Everybody's mm-hmm. doing it. Are you working on a book? Is a book coming out or a DVD coming out? I am working on, I'm starting in the process of working on a book, and I'm also working on Great. a few audio recording classes Great. Um, Great. so that people will be able to download. They'll include worksheets and things to help people on their gluten-free journey. So that's definitely that's in the That's fabulous. So definitely when that's ready, let me know and we'll have you back on the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Linus. You're welcome. And uh, Jennifer, um, we oh, one more thing we always do on the wellness journey. Uh, we wish you well on your journey as you continue to go on and discover all the things that the Creator has for you. you you're well on your way, and we just wish, wish you well on your journey. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And right back at you and everybody else. Thank you. Well, that's Jennifer Fugo, and we're so glad that she spent time with us today, and I'm so glad that you chose to spend some time on the wellness journey where we really take a look at the journey because it's all about the journey and the things that you learn around the journey and also the tools that you pick up along the way. And I hope you've enjoyed our show, and we'll be looking forward to you tuning in next time. This is Linus from PraiseWorks, and you're on the wellness journey. We look forward to you joining us again on our next journey. Take care.